Right, well, hello, and uh, lovely to see you all again. Cheers, don't worry, I'll be drinking a beer a little bit later on in this video. Hey, Lando. That's my boy. Right, well, sun's out, and um, I think it's about time to get another brew on. Um, like I said, I will cheers a beer with you later, but for now, I'm just having a coffee. Um, it's the afternoon, but it's a day off work. So chilling out, getting things started a bit late today. Um, we're gonna do a kit today. <coughs> Clockwork, started filming, so he's got a bark. Um, we're gonna do a beer kit today. It's um, one that I've ordered from a company called Geta Brood, Geta Brood. Not sure how to pronounce that name. If you know how you pronounce that, leave a comment down below. But yeah, it's a kit that I ordered from them a while ago. It's been sitting in the shed in its packaging. Uh, just haven't had time to get around to do it. Weather's been a bit crap, but since we have this lovely sunshine today, I just thought, yeah, could do a bit of a brew out the back. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. It's an IPA, and when I get to opening up the pack, I will put the recipe on the screen so that you can see exactly what we're doing. Okay, right, coffee time, cheers. Oh my gosh, that's lovely. Ooh, Lando. So this is the Hoppy American Pale Ale All Grain Kit from Getter Brewed. They describe it on the website as the trendiest craft beer on the market at the minute. This American Pale Ale is a hop lover's paradise, clean, crisp, and fresh. A balance of hop bitterness with malt sweetness, including the fantastic hops Aurora, Chinook, and Centennial. It is a six kilogram grain bill of crisp pale ale, Munich malt, crystal and wheat. This should produce a very drinkable 6.4% ABV. The yeast supplied with the pack is a premium quality Lalimond BRY-97 yeast. Okay, so um, water is boiling, getting up to temperature for the mash. And um, I just thought I'd do a quick unboxing of something that I ordered a while ago. Something that will hopefully make the brewing process a lot easier and a lot cleaner because, you know, we're after that really nice, clear, filtered beer. I don't mind a hazy IPA or, you know, a really thick stout, but um, I do want to at least one time achieve a really clear beer. So um, yeah, I think we should know what is inside this. I need a better knife. I need to be like these other YouTubers who, you know, flick open the pen knife, cut away. Yep, it is, voila, a hop spider. Now that is beautiful. Exactly like it is in the pictures on Amazon. I'll maybe put the link in the description, but that will hold onto the edge of my Brewster Beacon, when I put my hop additions in, that mesh is really fine, actually. Um, I can't see a lot of uh, hot debris escaping through that. But yeah, hopefully it will just hang on the side, allow a good circulation of the hops, um, because I used a muslin bag in the last uh, brewing video. I'm keen to see what this will do and allow the hops more circulation in the work. All right, nice one. So it's just coming up to temperature now. It is currently reading 66 degrees on the Brewster Beacons display. Mass temperature for this mash is 68 degrees. So as soon as it gets to temperature, we'll put in the grain and then we'll begin our 60 minute mash. I'm so impressed with the speed at which this gets the water up to these temperatures. It's been about 30 minutes. It allows me to go away and do something else while the timer here will let me know once it's got up to the mash temperature. Um, equally, when I was sparging last time and cooling the work down, with the pump system in play, recirculating the work, getting the cold water through it as quickly as possible, I'm just so impressed with how this machine deals with temperatures. It's brilliant. Love it. Absolutely love it. 
Right, 66.6 .6 degrees now, it'll be coming up really quick. Let's get ready to pour in our grains. Got it in just after the 60 minute mark, so we're probably gonna let this run for five minutes after the alarm goes off. Wort is recirculating nicely. Uh, grain bed will settle nicely, and hopefully, yeah, at the end of this, we'll get um, the gravity that we need. We'll take a gravity read in as soon as this is done. Just always making sure that there's enough water in the water gauge so that the pump is recirculating enough work but never running out at the bottom. We don't want to scold the element by leaving it dry, so we just adjust with the Bullcock valve up here to always make sure that there's a nice amount going through the system. Right, okay, we'll let that go for an hour and then we'll be right back for sparging. Okay, so we're at a boil now, 100 degrees. It just began coming out of the lid, like spouting out of the roof. So um, we're gonna get the uh, hop spider in and then our first batch of hops, which have to go in at 60 minutes, which is about now. So we're gonna do that and then do the rest of the hop additions when they need to go in. Okay, right, hops in. in their own little bag. See you later. Mwah. Right, so that's a bit of a surprise. I didn't know that the hops came inside a muslin bag. I've put it in the hop spider anyway, because my thinking is, although it might not help the circulation uh, as efficiently as it would if it were spinning around in the um, Brewster Beacon, uh, my thinking is that if it's in a muslin bag and inside the hop spider, then we limit the amount of residue that swirls around in the work, and hopefully we can get a bit of a clearer beer at the end of it. So that's the thinking. But yeah, I didn't know that they came in a bag. Um, useful tip and handy to know for the future. Right, on with the boil. <laughs> All done. It has just gone 10 p.m. and I started this whole thing at about 2.30 today. So give or take about eight hours, but a lot of the time has been spent cleaning in between things and um, thinking about the shots that I need to make this video. I did say I would have a beer with you at the end and uh, just briefly then let you know how it all went down. So yeah, um, a very long day, always learning new things, figuring things out at the last minute. This time around, I actually felt like I had forgotten a lot of the process. Um, I don't know why, maybe I'm just a little bit tired. It was meant to be a 60 minute mash and I had forgotten to boil my sparge water up to the correct temperature. So I extended it to a 90 minute mash. Hopefully that won't affect the recipe too much. That was one thing. Um, and just loads of little other things in between. Anyway, onto a beer. This is my plum porter from the last brew. I'm not gonna review it here for you now. I just wanna crack on, have a drink, and enjoy myself. Before I open it, the American Pale Ale has been transferred into the fermenter. Uh, it is quite cloudy, I'll admit that. 
but hopefully after fermentation has kicked in that will just drop to the bottom and clear out. Uh, we were on batch volume, 23 litres, so that's good, hitting our targets. Target original gravity for this was 1.06. I've measured mine and hit 1.05. So not quite on the number, but I'm gonna put up with it, make do, whatever. Anyway, I'm gonna open this and um, say cheers. Lovely germly. That is some head. Wow. Oh, that smells so good. Right. I will see you for a review of this and an update of what's going on there in the next video. Cheers. Mmm. Cheers.